Mr. Sam Elliott, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. Well, I wanted to start today because, you know, Variety has been around. We've been covering the entertainment business almost 120 years. It's hard to believe more than a century. So I could not resist. I went into our archives and I looked up and I found the first time that one Sam Elliott actor was mentioned in Variety. Do you have a guess as to the year? Hopefully it wasn't 120 years ago. <laughs> no, definitely I not. I don't know. Was it Lifeguard? <laughs> no, it was 1968. April 16th, 1968. Oh my and God. in classic, old Variety fashion, it is two sentences. And it says, Sam Elliott wins term packed at 20th. So this was, if you want to take a look at it, this was when I guess you came down and it, it mentions that you were a football player at the University of Oregon. That's a lie. <laughs> I ran track. That's funny. All right. Well, we'll correct that record. Some... That's funny. Is wow. it that? I don't know that I've ever seen that. I've... Well, we will get you a copy if you would Thank like you. one. But, Thank uh, you. you know, that is such a... Uh, indicative of the time and the era in which, and that was, of course, like like today, that it's was a, a whole other world. A today. changing era. It's a whole other world. I was focused on coming to California when I was like nine years old. We used to go to a. I grew up in Sacramento. I was born and raised in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I used to go to a local theater called the Sequoia. Mm -hmm. There was a movie called The Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> And the creature from the Black Lagoon spoke to me on so many levels. I saw it several times, and I really made up my mind, and I thought, that's what I'd like to do. And then I watched a lot of TV in the, through the 50s, particularly Westerns. <laughs> and I didn't think any of the actors were all that great. And I thought, I would convince myself that I could do that. The television stuff I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the old John Ford movies. Sure, but that inspired you. So at that it young inspired, age, you, yeah, were, you I was, were inspired. I, just, I wanted to make an audience feel what that magic was doing up there, the light and the celluloid and that whole thing. But, well, let's talk about 1883. Such a character. I mean, you really just brought such dimension to what could be a very two-dimensional character, tough, grizzled uh, Pinkerton detective. And of course, you've done many a Western in in your time, but 1883 was really like a 10 hour movie. Yeah. Can you talk about what it was like to maintain that character, to bring the emotion? It wasn't a big stretch for me <laughs> because I was so familiar with the genre. That said, I went places that I'd never gone before in that genre. And I think that's probably because so much of the character was internalized mm -hmm. rather than, as you mentioned, the, the two-dimensional thing, mm -hmm. you know. The opening sequence, I, I watched, I rewatched it, your opening sequence, you mm. do not speak for nine minutes. Yeah. It is all emotion and it is emotion, yeah. your wife and daughter, and it's that just that best kind of drama because we get to piece it together. But was that the first thing you shot? No, we'd actually, we'd been in production for nearly six weeks and we were right there right outside of Fort Worth in a place called Silverado. Mm -hmm. It looks like Stepford. It's like the most beautiful horse country that I've ever seen in mm -hmm. my life. And it's just covered with these beautiful animals. And the people there are really in deep into the reigning world. And I'd never been around that before. But we shot a lot of it very close to that place, the opening sequences. Mm -hmm. And in Fort Worth, which is not far away. Mm -hmm. That house was under construction all the time that we were there. You know, it started from the ground up. Mm -hmm. They built that thing. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, God, there it is. When are we going to shoot it? <laughs> we drive by it every day. And so I was in pretty deep in terms of the work itself. And I was so ready by the time we torched that thing <laughs> to tell the tale. It's quite an introduction yeah. to Shea Brennan. It is one of the great introductions I've ever had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forever grateful to Mr. Sheridan for that. 
of course, Taylor Sheridan, the creator of 1883 in Yellowstone, and so many shows, I can't even name them now, but, but what, he's, of course, an actor and a director. What was it like working with somebody who has walked a mile in your boots and yeah, is also I, such I, an auteur? I don't auteur. know that I've ever worked with anyone in, in Taylor's capacity as a writer or director that, understand that understands that genre as mm -hmm. much as Taylor does. That goes in all the westerns that I've done. Maybe Milius understood as much as Taylor does. John but, Milius, the screenwriter. Well, Taylor is such a gifted writer in so many ways. and It was a treat, you know, in, in every way. I mean, it just I just felt like it was a gift every day, you know, and it was a, a weird time. We're in the middle of the pandemic. People are dropping like flies, and there was like a hundred and some people on the company that dropped out during the production with COVID, and uh, at the, you know, we we're in incredible conditions, you know, over a hundred degrees when we're in Texas day after day after day, and right. then we went to Montana, it was in the teens day <laughs> after day after day. You were feeling like the characters, you're yeah, trudging was, through the West. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge, it was a challenge, you know. Yeah, you shot from August of 2021 to January of 2022, right. which was still, you know, a very touchy time for the pandemic and it must have been just amazing to be out there in in the open with that incredible company and the story in 1883 very much smallpox is a factor right. did that did the parallels hit you that was our smallpox yeah it definitely hit us i think mm -hmm. all of us talked about that because smallpox was mentioned early on in the you know in the first episode it was talked about mm -hmm. it was determined that mm -hmm. somebody had smallpox you know and mm -hmm. We gave him a heave ho. It was, yeah. You know? Did that bring an extra layer of, of emotion for you all to play? Do you yeah, it just makes it all a little more real, you know. It's uh, there wasn't any need to bring any any extra layers in. It was just there. It was mm -hmm. part of it, and everybody was in so deep and so committed to this project, whether they were on this side of the camera or the other side, looking through the lens. Mm -hmm. Everybody was committed to it because we were all on the same journey, and it, you know it was difficult. Right. And when you suffer the same difficulties, you know the the, the whole hierarchy thing kind of dissipates very quickly when you're in the in it together. And to me, out of that kind of a situation, that's where the good stuff is born. You know, when you're looking up at people or waiting for people to get out of their trailer or mm -hmm. whatever, that, that dissipates it. When everybody's in cahoots, mm -hmm. in sync, mm -hmm. it just enriches the whole process. And that's the way the show was. I'm thinking about it. Ain't going to quit. If I'm digging a hole, I'd rather do it before the sun's high. Incredible cast, incredible crew up and down the line, incredible bunch of atmosphere people that did nothing but suffer through it, you know. No, but they were all there, they were all there. It was like on all of them, you know, and they all had, a lot of them had their moment. They all had, once in a while through the course of it, there would be a need for a line to be written and rather than giving it to one of us, you know, how about this guy? He's been suffering here for three months on the trail. And they'd get their moment and we'd all get excited <laughs> for them. And it was just, they'd deliver. They'd just deliver. It was like they'd been doing it forever. That that's, you know? speaks to a, a real Incredible. spirited generosity on the yeah. set. That's amazing. Taylor's a very generous man. He, he, he understands the actor's plight probably become, because mm -hmm. of coming from actor mm -hmm. world himself. And he has a habit of hiring people over and over again to do other shows, mm -hmm. you know. Which, one of the things that rewatching it to prepare for this, I really could see that you you get wonderful pieces in different episodes with with each of the main characters, yeah. and nothing is more just heartbreaking than your conversation with Elsa. But when your love dies, a little piece of you dies with him. But as she's getting over her lost love. What was it like to play that scene with her? You brought so much to that with so few words. You know, when I, when I was reading that piece, 
it really touched me because it was, it was it's not any time an actor gets an opportunity to like tell a story if it's a good story you know it wasn't long it was longer in the doing of it i think on the page than it ended up being on the screen maybe by a line or two <laughs> but when you have an opportunity to tell a story that you know people are going to like listen to and one that touches you then odds are it's going to be a lot of fun and then meeting Isabel and watching, having watched Isabel for months, that was months into it when mm -hmm. we did that scene, mm -hmm. and seeing how committed she was as a young girl, she turned 21 on that show. She suffered it more than any of us because of the way she was dressed, whether it was in Texas or in Montana, but in, particularly in Montana. I mean, they took her and put her in a stream when it was, it was freezing outside, we were all bundled up. <laughs> She's over there laying in a creek, you know, and it's like, and never complained about it. And just continued to deliver these brilliant performances. And this, the voiceover was equally brilliant, I thought. But when we, you know, she's there suffering the loss of her man and I'm, you know, going to the, going to the ocean, mm -hmm. taking my wife to the ocean. <laughs> Which it, that you is. You know, it was just, it was the most special moment, one of the most special moments in the show for me in terms of performance. I'll take my wife to the ocean. And I'm going to sit on the beach and let her see it. It was interesting because I got to the set that day expecting to do it as it was written on the page, and it was written on the page that Shay rides up on her, mm -hmm. on his horse. And I was always a little perplexed by that, but how we're going to go where I want to go in that scene with him on a horse. He gets down off of the horse, but then he has to get it back up to ride out. So the director told me when I got there, Ben says, you're going to walk in. And I just said, good for you, man. That's, the, that, that's a great, great directorial change that he made because it allowed us to be close quickly. Mm -hmm. And it also allowed me not to have to mount up and ride out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mount up on a horse like I did when I was a kid. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. And of course, that, that scene is, I think, around episode six. And yeah. then, you know, after many more miles and much more drama, to see, spoiler alert, folks, the, 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 to see the fate of Shay Brennan, we see him finally he gets to that beach. He takes his wife to the beach. Just look at that, Helen. Isn't it beautiful? Did that feel right for you? Yeah, it did. By then I was ready. You know, we'd all come to grips with the fact that it was over. I think everybody was sad to see it over. I know I was. I mean, I'd have, I'd have liked to have just had that wagon train go to Canada by then, you know, and just stayed with it. That said, there was a lot of people that were ready to, to see it done, and, you know, crew-wise, cast-wise, they'd had enough, I'm sure. <laughs> but seeing everybody kind of drop off along the way, die along the way, yeah. along the trail, you know, a good many people died on the trail. It was, you know, Shay was, was on his mission to get his, you know, mission number one was to get all these travelers at the end of the destination, as many of them as he could anyway. And number two was to take his wife to the ocean so she could see it. That was her dream, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And then the hummingbird flies that was, up. <laughs> that was an interesting touch. That yeah. was amazing. Would you revisit, if the, if the opportunity came, would you revisit Shay Brennan in some way? I don't know, you know, we talked about that and <clears throat> we gave him a great opportunity because I think the studio was like keen on doing more. <laughs> Taylor's thought and David's thought, 101 in general, in general was that, you know, everybody's dead. What are we going to do? <laughs> and my thought was, well, let's, let's, do a, let's do a prequel to this. Where where was La Monica and, mm -hmm. and and you know we could definitely see where more were of those, those two guys, 
pick it up after the war. Covenant, right. You know, and, and when when they were, you know, Pinkertons. There's there's plenty of stuff to do. Wonderful. Well, Sam, we so appreciate your time. We thank you so much and truly thank you for an incredible season of television. Thank you so much.